What's up everyone, Bradley Jack Design here with another design breakdown. This time we're going to take a look at this Andrew Wiggins design I created before he got traded. Um, so I had a lot of people request a breakdown of this and it's actually a pretty simple graphic but I'll show you what I did to create this graphic. So let's get rid of everything. So it starts off with the background. Um, for some reason I did a gradient map instead of just making it a standard color that is uh, reminiscent of what the Timberwolves use. Um, I have some text I added to it. So some just plain text. You know, I've got Maple Jordan up here at the top, which is um, just a, a stroke um, set to 50% opacity. And then I have that set to overlay. And I have the set with zero fill um, to have a stroke on it. So I would be able to do this overlay without having to do like a screen or multiply to get the um, stroke on the outside of that. Then I just have Andrew Wiggins in the middle, smaller, and then a big old 22 here, the same thing. 0% fill with just a stroke. That's how you can get just um, strokes like this on your text with nothing inside. So next I have a cityscape at the bottom. So what I did was I found this photo of Minneapolis, went ahead and just sort of roughly clipped out everything, um, clipped out the sky and just had everything included below it. Went ahead and tweaked the levels on it to brighten it up a bunch. And then I have a gradient map on top of that, which matches the background. The gradient map itself, you can see is the Timberwolves dark blue, their lighter blue, and then the green they use. So that's what we have here. I have a little bit of a lighten. This is just a, um, I think just a light gray that I just made a quick gradient over to lighten this area. Then I have the Timberwolves logo here. I went ahead and set it to screen, um, which makes it look like this, and then put a gradient map on top of it. So we just see the white on it. You could have easily just found a vector version of it and highlighted the white in Illustrator and just pasted that over, but I guess I decided to do it this way. So then I've got some other stuff. So I've got these green and white bars here. So these are just some green bars um, with these uh, chevron arrows pointing to the right, just duplicated a bunch and, and moved over um, and masked to the green bar itself. So I just have these green bars and then these rectangles that are darker to darken up the area. And those are set to multiply at 20%. If I do that, set it to full, it looks like that. So I just wanted a faint texture on the arrow or on the lines of the arrow to sort of set up a composition. So then we have um, Wiggins himself. So what I did for this was I took this initial photo of Andrew Wiggins and I have made some adjustments to this photo. So these are some adjustments I've done using the actions that I have available for purchase. Um, I went ahead and probably sharpened it up a little bit more than usual. Yeah, that's why you're getting all these highlights. It's really, really, really sharpening it up. So if I pull open the unsharp mask, I can show you that it's set to 59% at 2.5 pixels. Um, I went ahead and tweaked the saturation on the blue to make it more blue, make it more accurate. Um, but this is what the original photo looked like. Delete this layer mask. This was the original photo. And this was using the in action I have available for purchase um, that makes it look like this in one click. So I went ahead and made those tweaks. Let me go back here. So this is the photo of him. Now what I wanted to do with this was for you to be able to see the background and everything through Andrew Wiggins and make it look like almost as if it was um, painted on or screen printed on with two different paints. A dark blue, the same dark blue we used before, and then white. So what I did was I have the shadows layer, which is just the shadows. So let me see if I can click in here. So yeah, this is all, I ended up making this all rasterized. Let me see what we got going on here. I'm trying to think of what I did to do this. So yeah, so in the channels here, I've got a couple different 
layers here. So in order to do something like this, I'm pretty sure what I did was this. So we have this Andrew Wiggins layer clipped out. I'm going to duplicate that and then I'm going to rasterize it. And then I'm going to go to the adjustments, gradient map, clip it to just this, make it black and white. So you can see this is reverse, but this is actually what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this slider over and get just the dark points, the darkest shadows. So something like this. So you can see if this was reversed, it would look normal. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to take this, hit Command E to rasterize that. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to hide it and make a new layer. And then, oops, hit save on accident. I'm going to go into the channels, create a new channel, and paste that. So this is creating a new layer of just what I had selected. So what this is going to allow me to do is I can then go in, turn on my channels back, turn off the alpha channel I had. So on this new layer, I can go up to select, load selection. And then what I can do is under that, anything you have in the channels you can select. So I can select alpha four, which is what we just pasted. Now you can name it to something so you know what it is, which would make more sense. I'm gonna hit okay. So what it does is it selects anything that's white in this layer. So since we made all of the darkest darks white, it's only selecting the darkest darks. So if I just select, you know, this dark blue color down here, and I have a gradient set to 100%, I can fill that in, and now I have the shadows of Wiggins. So it's just the shadows. So that's what I did here. So it's just, this is what the final result was. This is what we just did. Oh no, sorry. This is what we just did. And this is what the final results when I did. So I used a, a different color to make it slightly darker. Um, and this is set to normal and these are set to normal. So you don't have to do multiplier or anything. You can just have it set to normal because it's only it's one color just of whatever you selected, basically masked to that one area. So I did the exact same thing for the highlights. Same process, use a gradient map or levels on a black and white layer to only show severe whites. Now this one I just left plain. Um, this is just what it would look like after the fact very harsh black and white and then so this one I just set to screen because it's white um, I don't have to worry about the color changing because it's white and then I have this all masked to this layer of Andrew Wiggins the clip of him so this is how we can see some of this stuff through behind Andrew Wiggins so then that's really the hard or more complicated part of this graphic I went ahead and added, added his signature on here. Just found a trading card with his signature on it. Do a gradient map on it. Uh, there's a whole nother video I do, a quick tutorial on how I add autographs or signatures to my graphics. So you can go check that out if you wanna see a more in-depth way of how I did this. Um, and make it any color. This is black and white, so it's super easy. But in that other video, I show how to do it with color as well. So then I've just got some text over here on the left hand side. I wanted some contrast from this big giant image. I wanted some more details. So this is just a fun little detail area. You know, if we zoom in here, it shows pretty much everything going back to um, high school and then into his NBA career, some of his accomplishments. And then above that, I have some stats as well. So these, are, these were his career stats oops, at the time minutes per game, field goals, yada, yada. Again, just, I wanted something, this area was a little empty, so I wanted to have something in there. I don't care if you can read this or not because the design is just meant to have a little bit of more contrast with the smaller size text over there. Plus maybe this is printed two foot by three foot and this is completely read, read, read legible. Um, so then the last thing I have is this texture on the outside. So let me show you what that is. Do I want this on? No, no I do not. 
So I'm gonna delete that, delete wherever that is. Turn this back on and do this. Okay. So what I did was um, I have this texture here, which if we open up is this sort of uh, tin negative file I have, it's black and white. Um, I really like the edges that are on this. So I went ahead and added that to the edge. I inverted it so it was white instead of black, as you can see here. And then I had a little bit of, not a little, a lot of adjustments with levels layers. It was started off like this, but to get rid of all this stuff on the inside, the contamination, I moved the black over a lot. So it's just black and white. I went ahead and it looks like cut out some of this for some reason, but we'll leave that back. And then added on top some other stuff. And you know what? I actually wanted that stuff back that I deleted. Let me go back here. Okay, so we're back where we were. We're gonna turn this on. Ah, we'll turn this off, that's what we want. So we're back where we were. This can be deleted. So then I have this other texture on top that looks like this. So what I did here was I found a photo of some tree rings. And I just wanted to use these sort of broken up parts coming from the center. So I put a gradient map on top of that to make it severely black and white, lots of contrast. So you basically can just see the black cracks in the inside. I need to save that. So then I have that file here, I inverted it. So this is what it showed up originally, it looks like, it looks terrible. I went ahead and masked out parts of the areas that would hit his face and ear and look weird. So I inverted that, set it to screen, and put it inside this area. And now this is gonna make sense if I disable this layer mask. Yeah, I got rid of some of them that were here because I thought they were a little distracting. So I've got this just added texture on top of it. And then on top of all of that, of just this texture, I have, what is this, a paper texture, and I made it a little black and white. It basically just gave it a little bit of grain from a natural paper. So this is the Wiggins graphic. So really all it is is it's a background color with sort of the cityscape at the bottom with the gradient map. Um, using the channels, I selected the low lights and highlights, made them their own individual layers, gave them a specific color, the highlights being white, the low lights being this dark blue. And in doing so, it allows it so the midtones are all gone. They don't exist. They're gonna be whatever this background color is, which is why you can see the uh, line here, the line here, a little bit of the logo. You can see a little bit of the 22 in here and then just added text as texture or added detail for contrast in the area and then his signature. So it's a pretty simple graphic overall that I enjoyed making. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. If you guys have any suggestions for any other breakdowns you wanna see, go ahead and drop a comment below. Um, other than that, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.